This is just embarrassing. Why, why is he like this? Eustace Kid Leroy Jenkins himself straight into Shanks, giving up his three road poneglyphs, his three billion berry bounty, his crew, his pride, and even his birth name, which Shanks then used his world government connections to legally change from Eustace Captain Kid to useless Captain Mid. Look, Kid stocks are at an all time low, and most of the fan base is shorting him, expecting Kid to go bust if he hasn't already. But I'm here to tell you why what Kid did made sense and how it sets up his role in the final saga. What I'm definitely not here to tell you is that Kid made a smart decision. I would never accuse Eustace Kid of intelligence, but what he did was, it was not as stupid as you may think. So to start, here's a little bit about Eustace Kid. He was born as a baby in South Blue, which is also the sea that gave birth to Foxy, Crab Hand Gyro, and the Puzzle Scorpions from Impel Down. So expectations were never high. South Blue is also the home of the Matryoshka doll princesses. And look, I have a personal theory regarding them. It's that they came out as one child, but then the parents discovered that you could open that child and there was another child, and then another and another. Meanwhile, if he was from the real world, Kid would be Scottish, which shouldn't be surprising since Edinburgh has the highest population of quote, red hair carriers in the world. Also, if Kid wasn't a pirate, then he would be a weapons merchant. In fact, he was a weapons merchant whilst being a pirate because he was part of the whole underground weapons trade, which makes him something of an entrepreneur by diversing his revenue streams. Very clever. But here is the most important thing that you need to know about Eustace Kid. Violence is his answer to everything. If someone insults you, punch them. If someone compliments you, punch them even harder, how dare they? And if someone dares even breathe on the same island as you, then crucify them. Kid doesn't speak the same language as everyone else. Be that English, Japanese, ou français, il ne peut rien parler, except for violence. And this language has its very own special structure, grammar, and idioms. For example, in chapter 950, it's revealed that the way to say thank you in the language of violence is simply not to kill someone when given an opportunity to do so. And it gets even worse if you try to offer constructive criticism in violence. The way you do it is via the aforementioned crucifixion. In this scene, Eustace Kid was merely trying to communicate that he thought this crew weren't, you know, quite ready for the task of sailing in the new world. Just a gentle criticism as he nails each and every one of them to a cross. So as much as I joke, and as much as I will continue to joke, I think it's important to establish this language because a lot of people are left like thoroughly mind screwed when they see Kid do things like the thing he did with Shanks. But of course, of course he would, it's the only language he knows. If all you speak is English and you're in Japan, you're not gonna suddenly be able to fluently communicate in Japanese, no. If anything, what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep using English just louder and more abrasively, much like how Kid used violence on Elbaf. But it's also important to fire Kid's impressively throbbing willpower because Kid has this Luffy level of stubbornness. He never gives up and he will never relent on his desires. He didn't join Kaido when he was beaten like Hawkins did. His spirit didn't break in the Udon prison. For the entire raid, he did nothing but consistently attack the emperors and he did not run from Shanks. Although arguably he didn't need to run towards Shanks either. He didn't need to do either. He didn't need to run away. He didn't need to go towards, he just needed to be. But probably my favorite Eustace Kid quote is the one that speaks to his raw tenacity. Even droplets of water can carve stone given enough time. There ain't a single thing in this world that's totally impervious to damage, which epitomizes Kid's fight battling strategy. His plan is to keep smashing his head against the wall until the wall eventually crumbles. And Hawkins also gave Kid some backhand praise when he was explaining the Kaido situation. Chance of successful escape, 0%. Chance of survival upon surrender, 40%. I did not have any other choice, but Kid and Killer were different. They stood up to him and fought him until they could fight no longer. Kaido will not kill men of such strong disposition. He will attempt to break their spirit so they obey him. I cannot imagine Kid will ever submit. He will die, which to Hawkins is an insult. This fool, why won't he just submit? Now he's gonna do the death. But to Kid, that's high praise. He will die before he submits. But Hawkins then goes on to add, the four emperors are different creatures from you and I. Ordinary logic does not apply to them. And the difference here is that Kid believes that he is also a different creature and that logic doesn't apply to him either. And honestly, Eustace Kid reminds me of Luffy from chapter one, a child who believes so strongly that he's ready for the challenges of being a pirate. However, his body needed time to catch up to that ambition. Kid is very much in the same spot, even as an adult. In fact, especially as an adult, his belief is every bit as unwavering as Luffy's, but he simply lacks that substance to deliver. When I saw Kid attack Shanks on Elbaf, it genuinely 
really gave me flashbacks to a child Luffy arguing with Shanks in chapter one. This might seem like a bit of an insult to Kid, but it really isn't because the exact same thing happened to Luffy just much earlier in the series on Sabadi. He ran into a wall that his willpower alone could not break through. And he would have kept slamming his head against wall after wall, destroying his entire crew and eventually losing his own life. If not for Rayleigh stepping in and convincing Luffy to take the time to develop the skills he was lacking to meet his ambition. Kid is a very rare character in One Piece in that he doesn't actually conform to the primary theme of the series, which is inherited will. And this is potentially why Oda chose not to draw Kid's backstory. The key figures in this world all have a mentor that forms a large part of their modern identities. Forget the straw hats, we've also got characters like Law and Rosinante, Kobe and Garp, even Big Mom and Mother Carmel. Everyone who is a something had a someone else to make them that something. One Piece is not a meritocracy, it's all about nepotism. Inherited will is very much akin to inherited wealth. Younger characters benefit from the experience and the teaching of their elders. And in this regard, Kid is just your classic, unremarkable working class dude guy. His backstory is about his childhood love, Victoria Shiruton Dorionaika, being murdered by a gang. So Kid, Killer, Heat, and Wire joined forces to kill murder the kill murderers. And after that, they're, well, they're not entirely sure what to do. So they start a pirate crew. It's tragic, yes, but it's missing that key one piece ingredient because Victoria doesn't give that ever so important inherited will. In fact, for all intents and purposes, she is a gag character. Her name literally means broth splatterina, referencing that one time she spilled curry udon on herself, to which Kid and Killer laughed and Victoria beat them up. And now as a result, curry udon is their least favorite food. That is the extent of Kid's inherited will, a slight prejudice against curry udon. And this isn't a joke either because the hardest time of Kid's life was when he was almost killed in a prison called Udon. So this is Kid's personal hell coming all the way back around. But this here is the difference between Eustace Kid and Monkey D. Luffy. And it really shows the importance of having that strong mentor. If Luffy didn't have Ray Lee, then he would have sprinted straight into the new world just like Kid did. And he probably would have done well enough for a bit, but ultimately he would have been erased by an emperor or a particularly strong Marine doing their daily new world quests. So I don't know if talent is the right word, but Eustace Kid is raw, unrefined potential. Brown sugar, if you will, packed full of potential deliciousness, but will never make it to the dinner table alongside our refined table sugar. I don't know why sugar specifically would be at the dinner table. I kind of lost the metaphor there. I just started mentally making a grocery list. But the point is that Kid is a true force to be reckoned with, but he never had anyone to focus that force and take him to the next level. And it's not all about physical power either. It's also about mentality. For example, if Luffy didn't have Shanks as a mentor, then the encounter with Bellamy and Mock Town would have gone very differently. In this case, Luffy used the lesson that Shanks taught him as a model for how a great pirate should act in that scenario. Without that mentorship, Luffy would have fought back, made a big old mess, and potentially even put a target on his back that Blackbeard would have noticed right then and there. Remember when Luffy exited the bar and Blackbeard said that he'd won the fight? Well, in this case, Luffy would have lost because he would have sunk to Bellamy's level, and Blackbeard may have just casually eviscerated him right then and there. Instead, Luffy earned Blackbeard's respect, and fate allowed the Straw Hats to continue onwards. Due to his mentorship, Luffy is like a well-lubed otter, equipped with the abilities from Rayleigh, the mental maturity of Shanks, and his own willpower, the combination of all three allowing him to slip past any and all situations. In contrast, Kid is a very dry otter who can't even do the simplest of things without running into extreme resistance. And if anything, it's a supreme credit to Kid that he was even able to get anywhere near as far as he did. Kid didn't have that all important mentor, so he could only resort to what he knew and what he knew it wasn't much, it was violence. So Kid dumped all of his stat points into that instead of having someone there to give him a build guide, which worked very well for Kid in the early game. At one stage, he had the highest bounty of any worst generation member, but this build significantly fell off in the mid game and in the late game, it's practically useless. In a weird way, Kid is a much better underdog story than Luffy. Luffy, as much as he doesn't realize it, was born into greatness. His grandfather was a Marine hero. His father is the most wanted criminal in the world. His mentor was an emperor of the sea and his inherited will was passed down directly from the Pirate King himself. Meanwhile, Kid was just a dude born in a pile of scrap. He started with nothing and everything he has is what he earned for himself, which isn't to discount any of the hard work that Luffy has put in, but these two characters did not start life in the same position. I absolutely understand and respect any admiration towards this character because he had it tough and he made something out of it, which has led to a series of Eustace Kid dedicated subreddits, the largest of which is r slash Kid Peace, which notably spells Kid with a double D, which is not how you spell his name. Eustace Double D Kid would just be Kid with a rather sizable rack. This place isn't a joke though. They take their kid worship very seriously as their description says. Your favorite
favorite character in One Piece is Eustace Chad Kid. You're tired of the constant kid slander by all the disingenuous Luffy Zoro lore, insert character here, self inserters. You wish there was a sane inversion of One Piece where we get to follow an actual pirate like Kid instead of pirate Jesus Luffy and his fun crew saving damsels in distress every arc. Welcome to our slash Kid Piece. So this subreddit consists of 523 damned ones, and they're not huge fans of my kid commentary. Posting threads such as us reviews back at it again, which is funny because they're replacing the actual channel name with the word us. But it's not us reviews, it's Grand Line Review. And, and they know that, but they're calling it us reviews for comic effect. It's all very clever. And this subreddit is a fascinating mirror of fiction and reality because the most hardcore kid fans seem to possess his exact personality. He is an absolute mad magnet for inflated egos. And speaking of, let's talk about how Kid more or less doomed himself. Despite the raid on Onigashima being the crowning moment of Kid's existence to date, it's also what ended up sinking him on Elbaf. Although there's a fun moment where Kid and Law switch roles during the fight, because Kid really brings out the competitiveness in Law. He gets Law to say, I'm not your opening act. And then Kid is all like, Law, mate, look, is that really important right now? It may be the single most level-headed thing that Kid has ever said. And all in the heat of fight battling against an Emperor of the Sea. This is why I know that Kid is capable of greatness, just not on his own. And again, that's not an insult because you can, and I guess I will say the exact same thing about Luffy. Monkey D. Luffy for the entire history of One Piece has been next to useless on his own. Without allies to compensate for what he lacks and inspire him to act in new ways, Luffy would have died countless times over. So this fight against Big Mom is a taste of compound Kid. This is what he could be with the right people around him. And so we have chapter 1038, titled Kid and Law versus Big Mom. Although at the time there was a bit of a meme going around on the internet that sneakily changed the title, they got rid of Kid's name and just called it Trafalgar Law versus Big Mom. Because to be fair, it really did seem like Law was doing most of the heavy lifting here. He was the one doing the real damage and Kid was more like a very loud distraction that allowed Law to get into all the right places. And at the risk of starting another Ass Reviews thread, to be honest, a lot of people could have done what Kid did. However, almost no one could have done what Law did. And here's why. In the end, Big Big Mom was defeated not by Trafalgar Law, not by Eustace Kid, but by inherited will. Law used his will from Rosinante to create the Reroom. He replicated the power of his mentor in a very specific situation. And without this key piece of utility, Law and Kid would not have won. Big Mom would have called her homies and the fight would have continued until Law and Kid were brutally eviscerated. So this is an example of one cake that raw sugar simply could not bake. Law had an unfair advantage via this inherited will. And unfair advantages aren't fair at all. But as Luffy famously said, there's no such thing as fighting dirty in a battle between pirates. Which he did state from his ivory tower built from countless unfair advantages, but it's the truth. Kid just doesn't have that One Piece X factor. And for someone often touted as the most violent and piratey hour of the worst generation, Kid fights, I would say very unpirately and actually quite honorably. No matter which wall it is, Kid always slams into it head first. He's not a schemer like Basil Hawkins, and he doesn't want to concoct a plot to kill an emperor like a Pung gang beige. Kid is a lot more pure than we're led to believe. Not pure in the good sense, but like pure in the bad sense. But he's also very honest in general. Kid only takes credit for actions he's committed. And he hates the storytelling choices of Big News Morgans, even when it paints him in a more positive and much more fearsome light. However, I dare say that Kid started to believe the Morgans hype when he assisted in bringing down an emperor and was rewarded with a bounty of three billion berries for his assumed role. Kid took that and ran. He ran all the way into Shanks. Numerically, they were much closer to equals now. Kid had actually defeated an emperor and he came in swinging with a three billion berry ball sack. So Kid more than bought into his own hype and assumed that this was going to be another great victory. However, it was not. And from his highest high, Kid was now knocked all the way down to a brand new low. Along with inherited will, the biggest thing that Eustace Kid lacks is purpose. Luffy wants to become the pirate king, but he wants to do that to fulfill a purpose. If he doesn't do that, then the purpose, it goes unfulfilled and then that's not good. And it's that greater purpose that drives Luffy that much harder. And occasionally, the context of this purpose can lead to greater decision making. And theoretically, Kid has the exact same dream as Luffy, to become the Pirate King, but to what end? There isn't much to it other than taking the title, it's quite hollow. And you can even see this when he's arguing with Luffy and says, let me be clear, the one who gets famous for destroying Kaido will be me. And I guess one way to read Kid's intention is a result of his childhood. His island was divided into four towns, each ruled by a gang, and the One Piece world is a large 
larger representation of that. The four emperors are the gangs of the planet that he's looking to bring down. And going even higher, the world government are that overarching gang. But that's me putting words in Kid's mouth. Kid will never truly shine until he realizes that he isn't the main character. The greatest success he's ever had in life was slotting himself perfectly into a team dynamic. And that is the future of Eustace Kid. He either joins forces with someone else or he dies. If he isn't dead already, that is. Also, I made this video of Bartolomeo urinating on Eustace Kid in a trash can. So if you're not already, I think that's worth subscribing for.